When you first encounter tech ball, it takes a minute to figure out what exactly this sport is. Soccer ping pong. Volleyball kind of too, because you have the three touches. With some elements of martial arts. And though it's a bit of a strange hybrid, the gameplay is gripping and skill levels of its top players, insane. It's very, very creative. It's very fast paced too. The athleticism is crazy. It's very gymnastic. It is a great short attention span sport. And because it uses a soccer ball, we know soccer. <laughs> Soccer's the most popular sport in the world. If you need more endorsements, look no further than soccer royalty. Lionel Messi, Neymar, or David Beckham. Yes! Come on! As a result, the game's founders are hugely ambitious, given how relatively unknown the sport is. No one knows what tech ball is. <laughs> I hate to say that, but it's, a, it's such a new sport. This hasn't stopped the team behind it chasing a wild dream. The 2028 Olympics. Tech Ball's backers are impatient. Most sports take decades to develop, build a base, a following, and professionally. So, are Tech Ball's plans realistic or ridiculous? If you really want it, can you just magic a sport into the mainstream? All right, Santa Monica Pier, Sunday morning in February. Yeah. Come on, where would you rather be? I mean, honestly, definitely not home in New York. Sunny day, but there's a tech ball tournament here? Yeah. At first glance, you're like, why would you have any sort of tournament on the Santa Monica Pier? But then when you start to think about it, it's like, why not? Why would you not? Yeah. I mean, you already have an organic amount of people. Right. So an amazing way to like discover the sport, it's really smart. Notable. ESPN, like yeah. this is not something that yeah, is this isn't just under the radar. Together. This is very official looking. All right, I see some players warming up over here, so let's see if we can go get smarter. Yeah, about let's this. let's see how it works. Okay, so this is Bellatech. Bellatech warming up for the finals. Bellatech ranks as one of the top most successful tech ball teams in the world. They're currently world champions and have reached today's finals here on the Santa Monica Pier, the US's first tournament in this year's calendar. I look at this, mm -hmm. I'm like, nope, can't do that. Right, it's like the same thing with like the NFL. Right. Can't, can't right. do what those right. guys are doing. Yeah, you want to see legitimate athleticism. Yeah. And that is clearly on display here. Clearly. I mean, I can't even serve it. Oh. Ooh. It's a really small service. Before their game, I caught up with the man behind the sport's rapid growth stateside. ESPN 2, ESPN 3, like, this is really wow. happening. So tell me about the importance of that. It's really important from building an, not only an audience, but also the brand IP of tech ball as a whole, yeah, right? And uh, you look at it from a, a broadcasting perspective, there's not many important sports networks as important as ESPN. Sure. Um, so that gives us a lot of cachet and a lot of leverage as we continue to build the tech ball brand and the evolution of the tech ball brand as well. well. What were the things that you saw that were there, but then also needed to be accelerated from a business perspective? Uh, community, to direct integration into a building community. From there, that community evolves, and that's where you have the brand and the audience, and then the evolution of the players as well. And then second of that, you need characters in terms of the players. If you look at the UFC, Conor McGregor is a character. If you look at the NBA, you have Dwight Howard, uh, LeBron, etc. Those are all characters. And so from our perspective, it's building that piece as well. The success of the UFC is touted by just about every nascent sport as their aspirational model. It was once on the fringes, and now it's exploded into a massively influential global phenomenon that's worth about $10 billion. Before tech ball can hit the dizzy heights of a sport like the UFC, it needs to build a bit more of a base. I'm here at Rutgers University. College campuses are a key place for tech ball to grow. And as a former soccer player, 
I'm very interested to learn how to play. So I'm gonna go learn from a two-time World Cup champion. Hi, Carly. What's going on? Great to meet you. Great to meet you. Thanks for uh, teaching me how to play. I'm excited oh, yeah. to learn. Oh yeah, it's a lot of, lot of fun. So Carly, tell me about your relationship with tech ball, how it transitioned from soccer to tech ball. How does that feel? 2020 is where I got introduced to it. Um, obviously, a lot of people were home and um, not doing a whole lot. And so I got introduced, got a table sent to me. I started using it. Um, I was coming back from a knee surgery. It was great to, to just kind of get my touches back. I've been using tech ball since then and playing. And yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Teach me a little bit about it. You know, it's it's similar to soccer, but they have their own rules. So as far as the the control, the awareness, your touch, all of that, that's similar. Mm -hmm. But as we as we look at this table, you'll notice it's not a flat table. So there is a curve to it. And depending upon where that ball hits on that curve is how it's gonna come off. The serve just needs to, to be any body part. Um, just has to hit that table. And one of the, the big rules is the three touch maximum, but the caveat to that is it cannot be the same body part in a row. You know, foot, foot, thigh. Makes it, you know, a little challenging as right. well. The game can be played as singles or doubles, but in both, the same rules apply. You or your partner have to use different body parts in a sequence. For example, foot, knee, head, in order to score points. Oh God. Do you have, you don't have to do three though, right? So no. you have to do a maximum of three, but you have to do at least one pass. So right. you can take one touch and she takes one touch. Okay. And you're perfectly fine. Makes sense. We are <laughs> crushing the pros. <laughs> so. While places like colleges are where you grow the grassroots and find the stars of the future, Showcasing top talent is another way to build a fan base. Let's give it up one more time, USA versus Brazil. So, back to the table in LA, and Belatech are up in the women's final. They go down in the first set to a tenacious Brazilian side. That move with like the sole of your shoe. They just pull back the second set to a tee up a tense decider. Okay. We just like watched you guys win, it was amazing. How do you feel? Great. I mean, we obviously like first tournament of the year and we wanted to start off obviously on a high note. Being able to do this in our hometown again in Los Angeles, you know, um, we're both living here and she's from here, I'm from California, but being able to have the home crowd here and, and do what we do and win and, and get another gold and add that to the shelf is always a great feeling. How did you guys come together as a, as a pair? Well, we met back in 2011 uh, when we played college soccer together. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. We met freshmen in college um, when we were 18 years old, nice and ripe, and uh, now we are even more ripe <laughs> at uh, almost 30. And uh, it's it's a blast playing with one of your old college buddies. Me and my teammates would have loved to have this. What if you had one of these tables like when you were in college? Oh my God. I obviously would have just gone crazy. I mean, it's just like soccer, like soccer tennis, right? We play it all the time at practice. Obviously, this takes a different set of skills, and I mean, clearly, you know, we're super gravitated to it automatically. Techball executives say they've sent tables to 500 universities in the U.S. alone. Not only do they need pros like Carolyn and Margie, with any sport, you need amateurs and fans too. That's just one element of a multifaceted strategy Techball's senior management team are pursuing to not only grow the sport, but make sure it survives at the elite level. We're just scratching the surface, and uh, there's a lot more to come. This is it's the world's best location for a tech ball table. Yes. Gabor Borsanyi is tech ball's inventor. Former pro soccer player, the Hungarian dreamed up a game for him and his retiring soccer buddies 
to play in a more low-key environment. So this is very different from what was born in your garage, right? No, because the the sizes yeah. are, are, are same. Really? Are same, yes. Okay. So what's the hardest move in tech ball, the one that is very difficult to defend? The best iconic move in tech ball that if somebody give up the ball, step closer to the table and try smash yeah. with food. I think this is the best. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I've seen best. a few of those, and especially if you really get a lot of power on it, I mean, it can, Yes. it, it would end up in, uh, in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the best. <laughs> the sport that you've created, how did it come about? So I grew up in a poor district, and we played all the time on the street with my friend. And when we finished the normal soccer, we tried to play food tennis on the flat table, tennis table. But unfortunately, the, the ball didn't bounce out. And I thought if we curve the table, the ball always come out, so the game will be more exciting and more comfortable. And so when, when you're first designing it, I mean, you're just trying things, right? I mean, you're trying different surfaces, you're trying different curves. I mean, tell me about that. You are right, and if I remember back, it was very hard, but the, the very, very beautiful moment because we put one table in the garage and of course we played all day, always, and the rules are working. We wrote, we wrote immediately. And later when we felt it's, it's working, we said, okay, we finished the story and, and we're progressing. It's an amazingly fast journey then from that, I mean, it's a matter of less than 10 years to, to the point where now you're thinking this could be an Olympic sport. I mean, that's a, that's a big dream. Yes, and we need dreams always. And I believe that the tech ball will be the, the Olympic sports. And in this year, the tech ball will be the officially medal sports in the European Games. And I think it's very important milestone for, for us. And I hope it's just the, the, the beginning and later we can go to the Olympic. We have 151 national federation, and I think the tag ball is the fastest growing sport. That phrase, the fastest growing sport, is one tech ball uses a lot. And in some respects, it's true. Borsani built the first table in 2012 and incorporated the sport in 2016. Two years later, the governing body FitTech was recognized by the Olympic Committee of Asia, and they've since launched world championships. But how does a sports startup afford to send tables that sell for thousands of dollars to university campuses and foreign sports clubs for free? For starters, one of the company's other founders, Georgi Gatian, is one of Hungary's wealthiest men. He pumped tens of millions into the company, and his fortune comes from online pornography. Then there's other people's money. At least $7 million has come from European and Hungarian taxpayers through various grants. At least $2 million has been spent on tech ball tables by the Hungarian government. Many of those have been donated abroad by Hungary's foreign ministry, including to Hungarian troops in Afghanistan. These political connections, they've made some in Hungary question why the company is getting so much public support, especially when the various tech ball related companies appear to be loss leading. So, it appears TechBall has a few safety nets that most developing companies don't have. And why is it targeting the U.S. market? Well, it's the biggest market in the world, and there's tons of potential when it comes to soccer, a sport TechBall has crafted a special relationship with. It does feel like soccer, football is having quite a moment right now. You know, we're coming off of the Men's World Cup, we're going into the Women's World Cup. How important is it that soccer here in the United States grows in order to benefit the growth of tech ball? For us, there's three, three billion soccer players in the world today, and it's, it's a world's global sport. And so we see the audience is already there, right? Because those are the tech ball fans of tomorrow. And so it's sort of funneling that audience into the sport of tech ball. And so the clubs that have tech ball tables, whether they use it as a training tool, helps us as well in that sense. 
The company has partnered with a long list of A-list soccer clubs, Paris Saint-Germain, Real Madrid, Manchester United, just to name a few. Sending over a table emblazoned with the team's crest or badge doesn't take much, but might reap some big rewards commercially. I think partnering with soccer clubs is a really smart move. It legitimizes the sport, it gives it some infrastructure. Mary Pylon is a sports writer and has been keeping an eye on Tech Ball's recent rise. A lot of these soccer clubs have really impassioned fan bases. It's really, really smart to kind of ride off the coattails of some of the most successful franchises in the world. And I think these soccer clubs pretty smartly understand that Tech Ball isn't gonna eat their lunch anytime soon. You know, a lot of emerging sports don't have that option. They don't have these huge platforms, these huge teams that they can just kind of attach themselves you know, I think as things get more fractured, fan bases are going to be smaller, but more impassioned, more hardcore. And when the pandemic struck, canceling some of their very first tournaments, the tech ball team made the best of it. Soccer's biggest stars were also on lockdown, bounce around their large gardens, looking for something, anything to do. Double final today, team That USA. said, tech ball is taking a lot of risks and spending a lot of money to build their brand. Success is far from guaranteed, least of all for the players. When you're traveling around for those tournaments, how much of that, you know, do you actually net from your prize money when you're traveling around still? Without a sponsor, pretty much not much, yeah. Um, maybe a couple hundred dollars if we win. While Team Bellatech won the Santa Monica tournament, they're not exactly living the life of pro soccer players. You just won two titles yesterday, but we're in a very different venue right now. Can you tell me about what these days are like your Monday through Friday? Um, it's pretty hectic, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm very blessed to be able to do what I do, uh, compete and also obviously have the opportunity to work here in Los Angeles. So, I mean, I'm up at six in the morning every day, sometimes earlier, sometimes 4.45, depending on training schedules. Uh, so I can get that in. Then I come sit up at Hi-Fi Espresso, um, basically Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, uh, sometimes Tuesday, Thursdays as well. I'll work for about four hours in the morning, hop over to my training session with my uh, trainer at Game Ready, and then I'm off to either coach, and then depending on the day, sometimes I'm also training at night uh, with my mixed doubles partner. I think I'm wanting to train and play more than I ever have, even in my early 20s. I found something that I really love, and when I'm passionate about something, and I have goals and dreams and things that I want to fulfill and achieve. So, like in the back of my head, right, I'm being told, hopefully, Olympics 2028. That's five years away or whatever it is now. So to me, I'm like, that's the next goal for me. That's a five-year plan. How I would achieve that is, yeah, I would love to be a full-time athlete and just be able to dedicate 100% of my time to just playing and competing and getting paid for that. In US Tech Bowl, there is no union or any collective bargaining agreements, salary minimums, or shares for athletes in broadcast deals. Players have yet to see big shoe or apparel contracts and are largely on their own for healthcare and fitness. So Margie has to invest in looking after her body through the season. So Margie's day after winning two tech ball finals is work, training, more work, Day is absolutely stacked. We want to see if her teammates is the same. Let's go check out what Carolyn's up to. All right, get started, Havana, go. You won the prize money yesterday, but how does that impact you? Like, do you rely on it, or is it just like nice, like extra cash flow? You know, it's a little bit of both. I'm, I'm a soccer coach and environmental consultant. That is not like much of a living. So like getting that extra chunk of change um, is, is huge. Last year, full disclosure in prize money, I only made like um, somewhere between twenty and thirty thousand um, dollars. That's not enough to live in LA. Um, anyone who lives in LA knows that. So um, these other side hustles that I do, um, which my side hustle is tech ball, actually, <laughs> it's not where most of my income is coming from. So it's it's really important that I'm getting that money. I'm winning at these tournaments. And when you're traveling around for those tournaments, how much of that do you actually net? 
without a sponsor, pretty much not much. Yeah, um, maybe a couple hundred dollars if we win. Obviously, tech ball itself, as the organization and the tournaments are now, you said they're on ESPN. They have sponsors. So, how do you see that? transitioning into maybe sponsorship for players. You know, USA Tech Ball is its own entity and they have their own sponsors and our image is used frequently and I feel like it would be nice if some of that was shared back but I'm ultimately not on their budget sheet so it's kind of unfortunate for us. Well, Greco really is playing well here. As there is more tournaments as you build towards the Olympics, how do you see that continuing to grow even from let's say last year to this year. It definitely seems like it's getting more and more serious. I mean, we're taking steps all the time. I mean, I'm drug tested frequently now. That wasn't the case in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Even like my location is, is like tracked as well. Like, mm -hmm. so somebody could come in here right now and be like, hey, we're gonna randomly test you, um, which is how they treat Olympic athletes. Two. Here we go, then set point of the serve, comes in, it's too short for his jack, and Greco absolutely storms past. So as it does climb to the Olympics, is that something that you're personally thinking about for you as a player? Absolutely. I'd like to play as long as I can. I think this is a sport that is conducive of, um, you know, as you get older, you kind of get better. We'll see where I am when it does end up at the Olympics. I'm not going to, you know, cry if I'm not in it. Actually, that's a lie. Probably will cry. <laughs> but I mean, I would be happy to see it in the Olympics whether I'm there or not. Greco out wide, heads the ball short, and that is indeed that! Greco has done it, dreams do come true! So what are Tech Ball's chances of making the 2028 Olympics in LA? So getting a sport into the Olympics is extremely difficult. You need at least 40 different countries playing it, and you need deep participation in those sports. Uh, you think about surfing or you know snowboarding or some of the things that have been more recently added takes a long time, sometimes generations, for people to really normalize a sport and have it taken seriously at that level. I think it helps that LA is hosting the Olympics. I think it helps that it's beautiful outside here and you can play on the beach and it's great. You know, this is also a city that has embraced beach volleyball, another sport that was added to the Olympics. But it's hard and you need to really, really do a lot of work to grow the sports. Gender equity is actually a priority now and that's something that Tech Ball has going for it. So. Do I think tech ball could be in the Olympics? Perhaps. Do I think it's going to happen tomorrow? No, it's a, it's a lot of work. Tech ball is an interesting case study on how to build a sport on an international level without a real grassroots base or even widespread interest. It certainly helps having state backing when you need to inflate its appearance and success. The real difficulty for tech ball will be whether it can truly create a critical mass of people to engage with the sport, which normally happens organically. Consumers are more discerning than you think, and slick TikTok highlights will probably only push it so far. But as a sport, it is niche, and the way we engage with sport has changed a lot in recent years. It is very difficult to grow a sport from scratch, any sport. It's not like the old days where if you got on network TV, millions of people would see you automatically. You need fans. You need athletes, you need sponsors, you need buzz, you need an online presence, uh, cross platforms. It's very, very difficult. I think what it means to be a successful sport is a changing definition. I think of tech ball a lot like a startup. You don't need to become the NBA to be successful, right? The, the pie of success is large and I think everyone can have a, have a slice of it. And I think that tech ball, you know, as a, a smaller sport, there's a lot of money out there. 